this is a, a CNCF official meeting. So network policy, working group, uh, subproject. Uh, so please be nice to everybody and let's get started. It's April 12th, 2021. So, okay, go for it, Andrew. Okay, cool. Um, I wanna go ahead. I know there's, I think, is there some new people? If there's some new people here, feel free to introduce yourself to the group. Um, no particular order, just hop in and say who you are and why you're here. Okay, first time here for me, I'm Steve Wong, work for VMware. Uh, I'm uh, not new to Kubernetes. I've been working on that since about 2016, but I probably know just enough about networking to be dangerous. Uh, yet I've been pretty active in the Antria project, uh, just trying to coach them along on building an open source community over there. And I got invited to join this meeting today by uh, Jay and Matthew. So that's why I'm here. Sweet, thank you very much. That's awesome. Anyone else want to give a quick intro? Okay, cool. No one else wants to speak up today. Um, moving on through the agenda, issue triage. I just looked, I didn't see any issues that were pertaining to us. However, I can share my screen. There are, there is, oh shoot. I thought I was host, but it won't let me share screen. I gotta go into, this happens to me every week. What do I have to do to share screen, Ricardo? Even though you made me host. Uh, <laughs> I, do not, the, I do not know how to you use your your host permission. Jay, add, add and as the host, please. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you're not host according to the attendees. Oh, I added as a Jay host. is. Okay. So oh, Jay can make him co-host. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll make you co-host. Can you not just push the share screen button? I uh, well, I tried. It won't let me. No, I can, I can, I can make him co-host. I know how to do that. So now I go to a Stoikas and I make him co-host. There you go. Cool. Oh, and now I took over the recording. Interesting. So, like I said, there isn't really any late anything pertaining to us this week in terms of network policy but there is a <clears throat> new issue open in uh, regarding new positions oh wait that's the wrong one more roles yeah so like more positions within sig network overall so if anyone's interested they can check this issue out it's 3258 um they're just looking basically for a couple, a couple new rules in the main SIG network group to uh, be filled. So thought I would just point that out. Um, oh, wow. These are all new. Are these like, did we introduce like 10 new roles to upstream? Looks like we did. Four, one, two, three, four, five. Wow. So if people are raising their hands over all already, but thought I'd point it out. Otherwise, nothing really popped out to me for SIG network policy. There's, I know there's still the PR filtering through from Ricardo to actually have a network policy label. That'll make things a little bit easier for us in triage. Usually we just look at all the SIG network issues. But yeah, cool. Um, and if no one has anyone else, I will gladly pass the mic over to Stephen, Vlad and Matt to give us a, a overview on Sono Buoy. Uh, Vlad couldn't make it to this meeting. So Vlad is tech lead of the Sonoboy project. Uh, in case people on this, uh, in this meeting aren't even familiar with it, Sonoboy is an open source Kubernetes compliance test suite. So it's years old uh, and it is used as the de facto and I think official standard for whether somebody's Kubernetes distribution <laughs> is um, is um, compliant uh, for purposes of claiming that you're a CNCF compliant Kubernetes distribution. Um, 
most but not all Kubernetes distributions fall in that category. So I don't know, I haven't looked for a couple of years, but I believe there were over 30 that passed the conformance suite. So it runs through tests that uh, check out how well uh, implemented the Kubernetes API is on whatever your distribution is. And if you get a passing grade, then you sort of get qualified for a self-certified badge to say you're compliant. And then there's a lot of plugins and collateral tools for Kubernetes that make a statement that they should work with any compliant Kubernetes. So, um, yeah, that, that's what it's been used for. Now, if Vlad were here, he'd tell you this, because I know this because I talked to him just last week, that uh, it was originally created with this mission of just testing Kubernetes, but it's had kind of an undocumented plugin uh, interface where the test suite is really just a pod that runs under Kubernetes and that it is possible to run other forms of compliance. So uh, Matt developed a network policy test suite and I saw a demo of it a few months ago and was pretty impressed. And it's occurred to me and a few other people that there might be great value in extending this Sonoboy test suite to go beyond just testing Kubernetes itself. You know, Kubernetes initially was just Kubernetes, but they've gone with plugin architectures where it, you know, I think the container runtime, the CNI, uh, more recently, the storage plugins, uh, they're well in underway to being kicked out of tree and moving to a CSI plugin architecture. And there's a lot of these collateral things with Kubernetes that could call for a compliance test suite. And then if you even wanted to take it a step further, you could go beyond compliance in the sense that some of these plugins have optional features. You know, like with C, I, I'm very familiar with CSI and storage, more familiar than I am with networking plugins. But there, CSI has evolved for in kind of the initial releases just basic functionality. And they've incrementally added features that first get enabled in a spec document, then in an API. And they first get enabled in CNI itself, which in theory is a broad storage plugin that goes beyond Kubernetes. It was architected to also support Docker storage and uh, Apache Mesos, for example. So the spec first goes in CSI and then Kubernetes has to implement it. And then finally, individual storage plugins of which there are well over 20 implement it themselves. And when new features are added, like for example, snapshotting a persistent volume, when it's first released, very few, if any, implement it. And for some of these plugins, it might take years before that optional feature is implemented. Maybe some of them will choose never to do it just because they're a plugin for some form of storage hardware that just isn't capable of supporting the underlying feature. But there would be, the storage sake has been kicking around the idea that there would be great value in putting together a compliance and you know, optional feature tester that just gives a, hey, is this feature present or not? Uh, kind of thing. And it seems kind of silly for each of these groups to go off and implement their own thing rather than, you know, we've got this existing Sonoboy test suite with a plugin uh, interface. And it would seem to me that if I'm an end user, I don't want to deal with a bunch of individual test suites that evolve separately, maybe work differently. I'd rather just have one place to go and get it all done and, and have some kind of a consistent expectation of how these things would work, log the results. And if you look at Sonoboy as an example, this thing is useful to a user just to see, you, you can use it to test that your distribution started out of the gate compliant, but in many cases, it's possible to misconfigure them so that they no longer work right. So there are users who use Sonoboy 
just as a daily compliance check. Uh, you know, maybe they run it once a day just in case somebody messed something up or did some update that broke something. And this would give them a warning that, hey, this has happened. And uh, so there's an aspect that it can be used by publishers of open source to make a public declaration of their compliance and have a means to prove they're compliant. Then it can be used later by users who might run it at their choice, either one time or really just run it you know, on a scheduled basis because you know, as your production Kubernetes goes on with its life, things could go wrong through an update or a misconfiguration. And if we have this one base that would maybe go beyond Kubernetes into networking, storage, um, We've even kicked around the idea of possibly uh, using, you know, the extreme end of this might even be to allow application vendors to write their own test compliance suites. You know, certain applications, this might be overkill. Uh, you know, if you look at something, I don't know, like a web server, uh, you could probably ping the thing to do a test. Even then it should be easy to write a plugin. But some of these things, like a clustered database, a Cassandra, a MongoDB, typically go out there with multiple nodes behind a load balancer. And it, I've heard many users complain that they wish they had a thing that would police this for uh, a health check because it seems silly for every user to have to come up with them, this on their own. And even if, the publisher of some kind of open source, I don't know, service or app called Blah or Foo was to do their own, uh, it would be way better if there was some kind of a consistent framework for hosting these. Um, and anyway, that's just the background of this idea we were kicking around. I think Matt and Jay and I had talks on Slack with Vlad and a few other individuals it's still very early stages. So we haven't fully established whether this is feasible, although there's strong reasons to believe it is. Um, Matt already did this without Sona, without Sona Boy, but it just strikes me that having a home for this to live in would be a good place. And we could take this pretty far, you know, right now, even though Sonaboy is like the official CNCF standard, I went and looked at the project and it's open source Apache license, but it goes back so far. I think that nobody ever bothered to go put this in like CNCF sandbox or incubator status probably qualifies. But I think if we were going to, to take this bigger, there's other issues where we really want this to be an open community effort. Therefore, we should put it under the CNCF and start hosting community meetings and things. And this thing has kind of just been living along on inertia based on it worked okay before this kind of whole community thing got big and nobody ever went back and took a look. But I think we've got some broader issues we have to take on with it. So anyway, that's my intro. I'm not really prepared at this stage to go into like deep dive architecture diagrams or any of that, because I think this is work that we still have to do. So the, the talks we had about putting this together with Sonoboy just started like in the last couple of weeks. So real early stages, but I am interested in people's thoughts on, you know, whether this sounds good, bad, or indifferent and, anything anybody would like to contribute on things we maybe haven't thought of but should yeah yeah just um I, I hacked on this a little bit over the weekend and uh it got a got a plugin put together for Sonobuoy Cyclonus so you can run those network policy tests through Sonobuoy it looks like it's pretty straightforward it doesn't seem to be you know any anything that needs to change on either end so I'm pretty you know I'm pretty excited about that so now it's just yeah, I guess it's just sitting there. It's ready to go. At least that first step of Cyclonus, and you know, having a plugin and stuff. Um, you know, if there's any if there's any more steps that people are excited about, I don't know if I'll be able to do those myself. But like, you know, 
if you want to leverage Cyclonus or something to do that, definitely happy to help out or, you know, give advice or whatever. But yeah, it definitely looks like it'll work. Can you put the link to that in the Zoom here? That might be the next step, Stephen, is just we can test the Sonobuoy plugin on Antrea Calico and make sure it works. Yeah. Okay. Let me ask you, you something, Matt. I saw your demo at the Antria community meeting uh, a few weeks ago, and I know that it checks out network policy, but what about base functionality of the CNI itself? Is that something that the test suite does or not? Because no. that would be, I, I think if I'm a user that, you know, I realize it's lower level, but that would be of some value potentially. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. But yeah, like right now, Cyclonus is 100% network policies, mm -hmm. <laughs> hasn't, hasn't branched out. Does anybody know of an existing open source test suite that would try to do that? Like, is there a test suite for CNI well, compliance we, at all? Well, we have, um, you know, we have all the SIG network tests, right? So when you run conformance uh -huh. alone, you get pretty good verification of your CNI. You've got, as you know, 300 tests there. And then if you extend past what's in conformance, you get, I think, I think we've got 150 or something like that, SIG network tests. Um, and, you know, there's 5,000 total upstream Ginkgo tests that you can trigger through Sonobu if you want. And I think the thing that we always do in SIG network is we kind of fiddle around with them to get the right filters in place. And so I think what you're suggesting is a extended networking uh, yeah, subset. well, maybe these are already in Sonoboy, but it might be nice to call them out, you know, into uh, kind of a network specialty area or summary, yeah. because I know the storage thing is taught, the storage testing for CSI is definitely not in there now, but they'd like it to go in there. And, uh, you know, to broaden this out, that, that would be, a, I, I think, a valuable concept so that, you uh, the users get a breakdown if they find that their installation isn't compliant. Where do the issues arise? You know, where do they reside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my name is Sanjeev. I'm I'm new to this uh, group. Um, quick thought here. Um, so there's kind of kind of couple of dimensions here. One is um, Sonoboy for conformance testing, perhaps in context of the end-to-end -end testing that's already done, right? There's already an end-to-end -end testing suite, right? Mm -hmm. um, does that incorporate Sonoboy as its subset or what's its relation to Sonoboy? You know, I don't honestly know. I, I wish Vlad was here and, but so Sonobui, I don't want to tell you more than I know. So Sonoboy, what Sonoboy does, it just bundles the end-to-ends, the upstream end-to-ends. So the nice thing that Sonoboy gives you like, like um, Steve mentioned is it um, it runs all the end-to-end -end tests in a pod and then inside of that pod you can you know what I can just you can just jump in and I can show you also I have a cluster here and I'm actually running Sona Blue right now um, let me see here yeah okay I'll just jump in Um, yeah. So what we do, um, and what most people do, you all see my terminal? Yeah. Right? Is, you know, yes. tip, typically the way I use Sonobui and, and is, you know, you'll do like kubectl create, well, you'll just do like something like this. So I'll do like, you know, Sonobui run, and what I do is I tell it what Ginkgo tests I want it to run, right? So for example, this one, networking should check kube proxy URLs, right? And so say I want to name, run it in this namespace S3, let's say, right? So um, usually I just do this and then, well, let's run it in a different namespace because I already ran it a different one in that namespace. So let's make a new namespace here. Okay, so now, there we go. Now I do kubectl get pods dash n, S4, okay, kubectl logs. Now what I can do is I can go and I can look at this job, dash and S4, and this is running my upstream E2E. So if I just go in here, dash CD2E, right, I can just see them and I could see the tests running. And I could grab the logs. 
Now this is the end-to-end -end tests already do all this. So the question is, well, why you Sonobuy? Well, the nice thing is Sonobuy wraps it all in a pod for you. And when the test is done, I can say Sonobuy status dash n s4, right? And it's complete, right? So, and in a second after Sonobuy finishes uh, bundling those results, it's now passed and I can do Sonobuy um, why is my thing? I like lost my terminal connection. <laughs> Hold on, let me get back in here. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh, weird. I can't type in this terminal anymore. So I guess my, um, I guess the point here is that if, if the Sonoboy is essentially an umbrella for running end-to-end -end tests, then we should look at whether the end-to-end -end tests need additional network tests. And Sonoboy will automatically, automatically pick it up, but it'll also be available to anybody that's using the end-to-end -end tests with or without Sonoboy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so that's, I guess, the point is that, yeah. So Sonoboy gives you life cycle around the whole thing. And um, I think um, Matt's stuff is not part of Upstream E2E. It's, it's like a, a separate project called Cyclonus that we just kind of have. And it runs hundreds of gen automatically generated network pulse tests, as opposed to what we have in upstream, which is 30 or 40 of them. So yeah, um, I guess what we're talking about here is, and I don't think it would, here's the thing though, right? So this is where it gets interesting, Sanjeev, is that it might not be the best thing in the world to put 400 network policy tests into upstream K8s, which is why Steven's idea of, well, if we integrate this into Sonobuoy as a plugin, as a good home, it's kind of a good idea because we could then have a Sonobuoy plugin that managed these tests. Um, and if we wanted these to, you know, and, and eventually maybe there could be some kind of a, a strategy wherein we up landed this stuff upstream or had a, you know, there's a lot of ways we could go with it. So, okay, yeah. Um, and the other thing is, so yeah, that's one sort of, thought to think about, um, you know, and Sonoboy versus end to end test suites and, yeah. and what, what coverage is already there in terms of just network tests as well as network policy tests. Um, and maybe we can develop a, develop an opinion and, and share that with SIG network. Uh, yeah, definitely Sonoboy is a very good project and it's been very popular for a number of years. Um, it's everybody uses it. Um, the other, the other point was uh, network policy tests uh, were, has, ha, is, is there is the goal being some kind of compliance that if, if you've, if you've got a if you've got a cluster that, that claims to support network policy, here are the mandatory features it better support maybe, or maybe priority one versus priority two kinds of network policies. Some, some of them may support, for example, ingress policies, but not egress or so on. Is, is that the goal to sort of develop a metric uh, to describe the degree of support? This goes back to Dan Winship's cap. Hey, hey, Andrew, whatever happened to Dan Winship's cap about this whole thing of of like sort of uh, gradients support. Remember that, like the thing of like having micro versions and all that. Wasn't that related to network policy plus plus? There's like a readiness flag. I, I'm not really sure. I'd have to go dig it up. I, I I put something there. Also, like a last comment that why we need some some versioning as well, but got no answer. Yeah, um, I, I can go find it. Yeah. I can I can look around too. That was an interesting cap because the whole idea that was the whole idea behind it was so this all this stuff sort of comes together right, which is why I'm glad you kind of brought it to the table, Stephen and Matt. Is that all this stuff comes together, which is that we've got Cyclonus, which we can give you a very precise definition of what Net Netpol APIs you support. Then you've got this whole thing of um, this other thing of like sort of Dan's cap of support of micro versioning so that different CNIs can have different levels of support. And uh, I, I, as an outsider, let me just make a suggestion because I gather that maybe somebody has already proposed that for policy, there might be 
I don't know, call them t-shirt sizes or gold, silver, uh, platinum or something. But looking at what goes on over in the storage plugins, it isn't that simplistic where you've got 30 some hardware storage devices with drivers, but some of them just use such a different architecture that there's whole classes of features that they just can't build because it you know, would defy the laws of physics based on how they built this particular storage. So you need that flexibility where there's maybe a dozen of these features where it truly is an option. They're binary. It's either there or it's not, but it's not considered this gradient of having it is better, you know, puts you in a specific class and you're only required you're only allowed to have three different combina combinatorial permutations. You know, ultimately this could be an infinity of different features, which some pl some plugins have and some don't. And even I if that's not the case now, you should architect it so you could support it if you need to go there. Yeah, I think this is story three here, right? Understand whether new features are supported. So it's the combination of, I think, story yeah. three and and I think with network policy too, like it, Story at one. least for now, it's, it's, it, it would be good to have, I know it's somewhat rigid, but it wouldn't be the worst thing to have gates where if someone wants to use Kubernetes and they have no idea what CNI they want to use, but they want to look at a features, they want to use, look at based on feature sets, like this is a pretty important feature set. Yeah. So what was, what was your GitHub? Check out. What are you, S. Wong? Is it S. Wong? What's your uh, GitHub? Oh, name? mine, it's can't be Wong. Can't be, <laughs> I like that. Can't be wrong. <laughs> okay. I, I just CC'd you on that. So we should, yeah, we should sync up. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, you know, it's, it's potentially a little pejorative to classify these as like, you know, platinum, gold, silver, because there's valid reasons why certain things don't implement every feature in storage. It relates to price where, you know, it's valid to have a low cost storage that doesn't implement every feature. With Kubernetes itself, I happen to be tech lead of the Kubernetes IoT Edge working group. And when you try to take Kubernetes out to Edge where you have low resources and compute, you know, you've got things like K3S and microcates, they intentionally leave stuff out because they want to run it on Raspberry Pis and Intel Nooks. And I'd imagine that there might be some sort of a case for a low featured CNI by design, just because it's lighter weight. I don't know if there is such a thing, but it, you know, we, we definitely don't want to preclude it. And by putting this label that one's better rather than just taking a step back and say, look, you have this feature or not, but it's, we're not going to consider it a low quality implementation just because you don't have this feature. It, it may well be a conscious choice and that, some class of users actually prefer, you know, because there are trade-offs where you save resource by leaving out this feature. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and I don't think that's what it should ever be is like a gold, a, a ranking. It's more just like, these are the options. These are what they support on the network policy side. But um, yeah, I think it's a really cool idea. And also in this cap, J is like, the thing I know about what I was talking about is a, a, basically a status for network policy. So right now, when you, when you implement a network policy, the CNI sees that, and then it takes however long to actually implement that policy. So that status flag would just allow the CNI to come back and say, okay, the policy is implemented and uh, ready to go. So I guess you, that's the status part of it. I guess you kind of bundled that together, um, but it could be useful for us in a couple other things as well. Another yes. thing that might be useful, and I don't know if this is already built into Sonoboy that you know of, Jay, but in a lot of cases, some of these things are feature gated, you know, by throwing alpha beta flags and things, but there might be some value in having an option to run the test case in all these different versions. But I just don't know that you have to, whether you have to opt in when you you know, pick a CNI for Kubernetes, whether those typically are feature gated. And if they are, whether you only get one shot at making your choice or whether you can flip that to take multiple test runs. Yeah, when you add a new API, what happens to feature gate, Ricardo? 
if we added your port range, it's it's uh, feature gate. It's feature gated. Yeah. So, it's so that means the API server won't accept it if the feature gate is alpha, I think. Yeah, I guess it, it drops the field. I, I can't remember. I need to, to check the code, but I guess it dropped the fields if the feature gate is disabled. Or, yeah, it, it, it's not used in the validation. It's used on in prepare for create and prepare for update. So it's it's dropped. It. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, no, for yeah. test results, that would be a nice embellishment to say, hey, we didn't even bother testing this because of the feature gate set setting or whatever, so that you don't get false positives or negatives when you wouldn't even expect the thing to be engaged. Just kind of brainstorming here on trying to, you know, do this the best way we can. For sure. Okay. Sweet. Well, thanks for all that work. Um, and Matthew, feel free to keep posting about it. So I know you said you you already made a plugin for Son of Boy. Um, if you could just throw that on the agenda or yeah, on the agenda, the link to it, or, unless it's just built into the Cyclonus link. Um, Sure. Yeah, that wouldn't hurt to throw up there. So people can take a look at it. Um, but I think it brings up some good points that we should keep revisiting. I mean, CI is something, and, and testing is something we should constantly be thinking about. So. Yeah, I'm happy to help test this, Stephen. If you want, me and Stephen work together. So, Stephen, if you want to just ping me tomorrow, I'm happy to like hack on that uh, plugin and see if it works for us on some of our internal clusters. Just let me know. Okay. Well, um, I'm down to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> cool great thank you guys um so let's keep moving on i just thought it'd be good to we've been having a lot of discussions in the past couple of weeks about v2 um and you know looking into stuff like that but i noticed abhishek posted a pr for the cluster scope network policy um and i think a lot of stuff they're going to end up doing for that uh, new object is going to be what V2 ends up following. Following, So I thought it would be a good chance to kind of get an update on that from Abhishek real quick, and then maybe talk about some of the main comments that we got from SIG Network. If you want to just kind of take that over, Abhishek, and just give us a status on how you think that's going and what we need to be doing. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I see Yang and Satish also on the call, so maybe you, know, you guys can feel free to interject uh, whenever you uh, want to. Um, essentially, uh, you know, we, we we hold a separate uh, cluster network policy focus meeting every Thursday, uh, you know, just to make sure that we are all on the same page and we continue the work uh, and, you know, uh, make sure that the cap is progressing. Uh, we we invited uh, uh, Thomas Graff from Cilium and uh, Casey from Calico uh, and Antonin from uh, Entria to talk about, uh, you know, uh, get some perspective from different CNIs uh, because these are the CNI providers who have network policy CRDs, which extend the, extends the Kubernetes network policies. So we got a lot of uh, good feedback from all of them and uh, we've incorporated that. Uh, so at the, at the moment, I, I would say that the majority of the, or the, or the, the main comments to resolve or address would be, first of all, where do these CRDs uh, live? Um, and uh, I guess uh, there is uh, leaning towards uh, us opening up a new uh, repository under Kubernetes SIG, uh, similar to the gateway API, uh, how those folks have, uh, are evolving those gateway API CRDs in a separate repository, uh, instead of you know uh, directly merging them in, in the networking uh, group. So so that is what I guess we will also be heading towards. And I think it makes more sense to have a more generic uh, repository uh, instead of a cluster network policy focused uh, one, because uh, you know since we are talking about V2 network policy, which will be an object in itself and nothing related to the existing V1 policy. So, so it makes more sense to have a have a generic uh, repository. So maybe we can kickstart that discussion. I, I just left a comment this morning. So so perhaps you know uh, we can move in that direction. Um, so that was one of the uh, major you know comments. Uh, the other couple of them are you know I think it's more towards um, uh, you know how how to handle uh, uh, you know the defaulting of policy or rules for the cluster 
versus the strict rules. So, uh, you know, some people are against the 2CRD approach, some people are for the 2CRD approach. So, you know, this is where we are getting more feedback and we want to see what makes sense for the users. Uh, is too many kinds a lot of, uh, you know, new things for them to learn? Uh, or or they are okay, or users will be okay with uh, two separate CRDs uh, um, whose job is to do defined policies uh, for different use cases. So, so those are the kind of feedback that we are still trying to receive from the community. Um, and at the moment, we still have it as two CRD approach, uh, but we welcome feedback from this group and you know, anyone who has users who who are interested in cluster scope policies. I think it would be great if they can uh, come and uh, review the camp. Uh, I think uh, apart from that, there are a few other uh, technical aspects that we want to hash out. Um, so um, perhaps Yang and Satish, you guys have more to talk about because you know I'm on a I'm on a paternity, so I'm not following it as much as you know these two guys are. So they're definitely on top of everything. Uh, hey Abhishek, um, so um, are you saying that? So in this cap for cluster network policy, there are several comments that apply to what you would call ingress policy V2 and not directly cluster network policy. I feel like the boundary between cluster network policy and policy V2 gets blurred. Uh, not really. Um, <clears throat> the, the reason why I brought up about uh, network policy V2 is that uh, you know these, these are new resources. Uh, and uh, what we want to do is that these resources need a place to live and a gr API group to which they will be bound. So network policy V1 is under the networking skates uh, API group, right? And uh, and uh, and since we are introducing new CRDs, uh, our, our question to the community was that uh, whether we want to uh, write these new CRDs or new resources as alpha resources under this API group, or should we create a separate repository where you know we evolve faster uh, and uh, and then mature faster and and once they are all well matured then we merge them in uh, in the networking uh, uh, API group. Uh, this is the approach that is chosen by the service API folks. Uh, if you notice, they have a gateway API um, uh, repository and where they are evolving new you know ingress v2 APIs there. So so we kind of trying to follow follow the same uh, same approach here. Yeah, and I think yeah. that that was kind of the main thing coming into today um, that us as a group would have a hand in, right? I mean, if you guys as cluster scope number policy folks decide that uh, the CRD option is the way to go, um, A, it would allow you to get your work out there faster. B, I mean, I think it'd be easier to iterate in the first five months if, you know, you got it. You got the CRD, CRDs up there. People started using them, implementing them, and then you realized, oh, this isn't going to work for X number of reasons. But I think it's also important because V2 or an extension of of, of functionality for network policy is going to follow the same track as you guys end up doing. Like you're setting the precedent. So. Most yeah, I agree. Because you know, because the V2 is gaining traction, so it's it it makes sense for us to evolve these. Uh, new resources in a separate repository so that we are a little more, we evolve a little more faster than, uh, than otherwise we would. Yeah. But, but I, 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 this, this is a topic I think we haven't yet covered in our Thursday meeting, or at least we haven't gained consensus. Uh, so I don't know whether Yang and Satish have other opinions on this. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with, uh, um, Abhishek, I think I'm to have like a separate repository. Uh, like where we can actually uh, have like all the different proposals. Like, I mean, once uh, like once we have like the cap approved, we can actually have an intermediate repository that has uh, all the to be matured APIs, I think. Uh, yeah, that, that kind of makes sense. But I don't know, like if Yang and Govin have like different opinion, probably like uh, then uh, we haven't discussed last, uh, week, so probably we can discuss this week to figure out if there's a, a different opinion as such. Cool, and yeah, some precursor knowledge here. I think the main problem was Antonio asked, like, how can you add a V1 Alpha 1 to the networking 
API group because V1 Alpha 1's already been deprecated in the networking API group. And that's kind of what led to here. Ricardo, I saw you did have a, you had a comment basically saying this shouldn't be a problem. I don't really know. Off yeah, the yeah. After after I spoke with Antonio on Slack, he, he pointed me some some real real problems that might might happen. So if you take a look only to the code, it should not be a problem. But as you have like uh, things that point to the to to the API, like what was that like like a client goal i guess or some 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 somehow like when you do vendoring you do vendoring based on the api version not only on the api so it would be like networking v1 alpha one again and then the networking v1 it might generate some conflict so yeah i i was wrong into that comment okay cool no worries Good i enough. guess i was wrong i i think no one actually did that test right no, not not even like Dan or our team or or Jordan Legit. So we are waiting someone to make that test. Otherwise, I think we should probably bring this again and say, okay, who is going to who is going to 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 own this team? Can you deal with with Jordan Legit? Do you think we should actually just go to V two and okay, let's go to V two? Yeah, I mean, I think. There's a merit to, to both approaches. And obviously, you know, the the details of cluster network policy, we can leave to, you know, commenting on the cap if you have opinions and stuff. But I think when it comes to how it's going to be delivered, it's really important for us to decide, like, how are we going to do this and who's going to support it, right? So these CRDs that if we did make a, a repo kind of like the Gateway API, it's essentially, in my mind, it's it's provided but not fully supported CRDs, right? I mean, they're not part of the official API, but they're in the Kubernetes organization, you know, for people to use. Um, and it might help, you know, that problem Steven talked about earlier where we have a new feature coming in, cluster scope network policy or fe new features of network policy v2 to ease the implementation, you know, bottleneck by CNIs, right? Rather than by the time we get these features into main API, there's only one or like no CNIs are supporting it. Hopefully by the time we actually went from like a CRD level to API level, we'd have more than a handful of CNIs supporting it. So I don't know. Yeah, I agree. And I think we also need uh, the different CNI providers who, who provide network policy to be on board with that because you know they, they need to be, I mean, at the end of the day, they are the ones who are gonna be realizing uh, these APIs. Uh, so as long as they are on board, and I, I, I'm sure, I mean, uh, I can speak from Entria community, we will be supporting whatever is decided upstream. Uh, and I believe Calico and Salim are also on board with it. Uh, so, so yeah, I think the next steps would be to figure out, figure out how do we uh, move this conversation ahead about uh, getting a repo and, uh, and, you know, setting this up. Uh, there are going to be a few things that we need to do, uh, including, I think I saw the Gateway APIs, they have their, a website of their own with, you know, extensive documentation of those APIs um, and then examples and, uh, you know, uh, along with the API type. So, so and also the validation code. So those are the things that I think we need to hash out a bit. Uh, how do we begin? Especially, uh, you know, the gateway APIs, they are all core related uh, or, um, uh, APIs that they're introducing. So it's like a single goal. But here we have like multiple concurrent proposals that are coming through. Uh, V2 will have its own, like, uh, lifespan, uh, the custom network policies will have their own uh, evolution. So we need to coordinate a little better and you know, probably have a, have a thought to approach for this. Right. No, I agree. And that work, you know, the work of this repo putting it together and stuff is, is this whole team. Like we all need to take that on. Um, I guess then I, I guess we can talk to some gateway API folks and ask how they went about doing it. I don't know the workflow off the top of my head, Jay Ricardo, to like getting a, a new repo set up for something like this or how we would even get started. I think Jay and we, uh, Jay and Ricardo, I guess you guys recently did one for Cube Proxy. So it probably should be on similar lines. Uh, another thing is that I've actually been in a part of a group where we did this uh, in a totally different group. So you have to essentially 
put together a proposal for your parent group. So in this case, it's SIG network. Um, so put together a proposal, I, uh, unless it has changed recently, in which you make the proposal that you want to have a new repo for essentially everything to do with network policy futures. And one of those is cluster network policy, and there could be others, and these could be just multiple CRDs within the same repo. And then your parent group would bless it, and you would get space allocated for your repo. And then you could call it, you know, network policy V2 or network policy, you know, you, you could come up with a different name or whatever. And, and your proposal would need to, you know, cover things like, is it backward compatible with network policy V1? Is it, can it coexist? Like all of those things that your parent group would need to know. And then they will grant you the space in their allocated, um, because it, because this would need to be under Kubernetes SIGs and our parent SIG is SIG network. Sorry, I agree. Uh, I think you make valid points. So maybe, um, you know, I guess uh, as part of the team, I think maybe Satish Young, you guys can uh, probably sync up with Jay and others on the group here uh, to figure out the next steps on how do we get the so, repo. Me and Ricardo got so bored of, of trying to figure out how to get a GitHub repo that we just made our own GitHub org to, <laughs> to no, put but, a bunch but, of yeah, but, <laughs> but, but, but as soon as, as, soon as we ju justify it, it's a, it's a doable because yeah. as, as we are saying that we are trying to make the approach of CRDs and, and developing the CRDs, we can do the same approach as Kaping, right? Kaping is running on, on Kubernetes 6. Kubernetes 6 uh, or they, they have low, the bar is lower for the requirements like approvers or being member of something. So if, if you think it, it would help you, just just let me know. I can I am pretty I am pretty free this week, so I can run run and, and, and make this happen. Ask Tim Hawking and Casey they report authorization to create that that repo. It's a it's a really doable. Yeah, I think for justification, I guess we can just show them the comments on the cluster network policy proposal, the, the thread that you know this yeah. is what we, we can say we can about. say that we are we are getting this. Sorry, Abhishek, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. We, we, we can say that we are getting the same approach as, as gateway APIs and and say, okay, we need somewhere that, that we can work and the community can follow, but that's not as official as the Kubernetes repo, but that's not an, an unofficial as like JUnit J unit 100 slash, slash network policy V2, right? Um, I think you would, might be uh, want to put together like, again, like three or four slides to present to SIG Network at their next meeting and say, here's the proposal, here's the caps that already exist, here are the comments. So your, your pro formal proposal to SIG Network, and, and let me know if this is overkill, so I don't want to make it overkill, but this is a process that's been followed in other groups where you summarize your proposal to your parent in, in their next working group meeting with, you know, three or four slides that capture all your caps, relevant caps and prototypes and so on. And, or maybe that's already been done because I'm new. So I apologize if I'm speaking about something that you guys have already explored. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess folks already did that with cluster API, sorry, with the cluster scope and network policy. So the sponsorship for that is gonna be, I hope easy. Usually when I say that something is going to be easy, it's hard. Like I can spend something like a month or two trying, but I, I, I think it's a it's something that we can do and also say, okay, we are gonna put everything here, the CRDs and also the slides and the documentations. It's not, it's not going to be hard, I guess, I hope. Yeah. Sorry if it is, it's my fault. Just, just, just remember me tomorrow, Abhishek. If, if you wanna move, Andrew. If you wanna move, I can, I can help you. Maybe Andrew can open the the PR because, like, I am pretty noisy in the community. So, okay, Andrew is new. 
don't <laughs> beat him. Don't I, beat I, him. I, I'm more than I'm more than happy to help out to have a yeah. shot or Yang. Just I, I want to see this move forward. Uh, so feel free to ping me on Slack about it, and we can move forward. So the proposal here is a single repo for CRDs. Yeah, but we need to make it fancier than that, right? We need to make the proposals fancier than that, kind of like what Sanjeev said. Um, I think I'd like to write, or I guess, well, now I'm volunteering myself. I'd like to see something written up, you know, that says, here's, here's where we're at with network policy. Here's why we need this new repo. This is kind of the way SIG Network has already instructed us to move forward. Um, and here's our actual proposal to do so. And Gateway API has already done it. Um, just, just to clarify, we are talking about the cluster scope of network policy, right? And not the network policy V2 yet, or? Right, but this repo that's coming up is probably, it is, I would say, gonna house both at the end of the okay. day. Okay, we can, we can use that as like cluster scope and network policy, just like to do not generate too much, too much questions of what actually are we trying to do that? and say, okay, we are extending the scope of this repo to network policy v2 because we are using the lessons learned in cluster scope and network policy to this thing. I guess it would, it will make things easier. It's my, my I, opinion. I, I would start with something. I, I may be in the minority here, but I, I would start with something that you owned yourself and then transition it later. I, I don't really see much point in even though Ricardo is very generous running around and finding stuff like <laughs> and getting people to make GitHub repos. I'm like, I, I would just, I get something useful into a, a personal GitHub repo or, or, you know, something like that. And then, and then kind of be like, all right, I want to transfer this over just because why block yourself on having an official repo, you know, like, but, I think I think it's it's not it's not about uh, where we want to or whether we want to you know whether this is hindering our uh, progress in terms of writing those APIs uh, in, in you know in the structs and placing it somewhere. I think it's more about uh, defining in the cap as to where this will eventually go, and uh, you know because uh, yeah. at the moment uh, we you know we we can't just say that it's going to live in my repo something something somewhere. Fair uh, enough. I yeah. Think as part of this step, we just want to we just want to solidify. Okay, this is where it will eventually go. Yeah. And 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 we'll find a way how to reach it. Okay. Yeah. No, go for it. I don't have a strong opinion either way. I, I'm totally supporting that. Okay, Ricardo. But, but, I, you... but I but I agree, Jay. When when you say that you know when we start developing these API types, I think it makes sense if we don't have the repo by then, at least we can start it in a private repo and then uh, or a different repo and then. Uh, move yeah. it once we want the repo available. That yeah, exactly. there's, there's no rush. Like I'm not saying we talk to Sig Network this week about it or anything. It's, no, it's, it's gonna if like, it's gonna help the cap. Let's let's you write Abhishek. Like if it's useful and it's gonna help send the right signals and help the cap move along, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like fine. I don't I don't have I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Cool. So Ricardo, do you need to present this to Sig Network before we before you ask? For this stuff, or do you want to? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, just, just remember me tomorrow because it's a uh, 6 p.m. here in Brazil. And I still cool. need to some things. I will forget, I will forget for tomorrow. But remember me tomorrow. I, I, I can open the, the PR saying, yeah. okay, folks working on cluster scope and network policy, they, they need a place to put the CRDs and the documents and like the, the sample controller. You, you need to, to create those things, but they need somewhere to put everything here. Can can you create this repo and make like Abhishek and Andrew as the owners or the approvers or something like that? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So all we got to do is troll Ricardo tomorrow and we'll get the repo up for y'all. Yeah. We'll be in touch tomorrow. I know we're reaching the end of time here, so we can go ahead and finish up. The last thing I had on the agenda, uh, um, still working on, you know, a V2 doc just sort of preliminary, why, why are we doing it? Get some of our thoughts from our last couple of meetings down on paper. Should have, hopefully have something around that next week, um, but that's all we have there. Otherwise, I think that's it. Does anyone have anything else? Yeah, I got a, I got a quick request. Um, does anybody have any proposed YAML for cluster network policies or something like that? I just wanted to kind of like start thinking about that stuff in Cyclonus potentially. I think there was some uh, in the slides. It's, a, it's, a, it's on the, the cap. Um, which is the, um, I think Andrew just post, posted in the, in the chat. Um, I can repost it. 
Okay, cool. And I think there's some, there's at the top of our agenda, there's some slides um, and there's some examples in there, I believe too. Um, slides might be a little bit outdated. But, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll update the slides. We'll ensure that it's uh, reflecting the latest. Uh, I, but I, but I think, uh, as Yang mentioned, the cap is the right place to look at this. All right, I, awesome. I would, Thanks. I would just add that uh, the repos, the repos will contain more than just cluster network policy. So the name of the repos should be more like Ingress policy v2 whatever, and cluster network policy is one of the components of Ingress policy v2. Because otherwise, there'll be three things: there'll be policy v1, policy v2, and cluster network. So this should be one repo for policy v2 which includes cluster network policy as one CRD and one or more CRDs for other features. And that all will be in a we, single we, repo with a common name. We can call yeah, agree, right? that like network policy V2 or like whatever. I, 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 can, I, I, can, I can send to you like the PR on, on Slack and say, hey folks, suggest the better naming here. We just, just so like, the, like the get, gateway API guys, so, right? If they started off calling it Ingress V2. And then they came up, they didn't want to use the V2 because there was all this backward right. compile. So if anybody has a name that... that I, I had suggested on the KEP uh, network policy API. Uh, I think that kind of like uh, uh, covers everything network policy. But, but when you say network, even the current thing is a network policy API, so maybe it needs a little bit of differentiation. I mean... Or, what, yeah, or, yeah, but at least, at least I would say that we should stay away from V2 or cluster network policy yes. or any specific right. topic. Right. We can have yeah. that discussion on the PR tomorrow. Maybe so, a sure. net, net, network filtering API or something. Yeah. I, I was wondering if it's just going to be a long lived uh, repo that any new project would kind of start out there, develop a uh, CRD and then kind of. That's also, that's a good question. That's also what I was wondering. Sorry, I was away for a little while, but uh, uh, I guess uh, my question will be is, is the intent of the repo? Being it always hosted the new things that we're proposing, yeah. and once we graduate things to we want, for example, the new skin can come back to this repo and uh, and stay uh, v1 alpha and v1 beta there. Um, I don't know if what you guys think on those lines. I think typically they haven't done that. They, the uh, a new Kubernetes SIG repo is for a relatively well defined project like the Gateway API yes. is basically in SV2. Uh, Gateway API will not hold anything other than Ingress V2, logically. So you would want to justify another repo for a something that has nothing to do with network policy. This is generally in the umbrella of network policy, whether it's cluster network policy or network policy V2. But of course, you know, if you can sell your parent SIG, you can do anything. Um, the but even if it's it scoped, is, the harder. Yeah, even if it's scoped to network policy, there could be, you know, five more things that we want to do next year. That would they still go in there or yeah that are all under the network that, policy umbrella yeah i mean i think we start we start with this yeah and we see what we can do because the just broader, come up with a i think maybe we just come up with a generic name might be good to keep it safe yeah well, well ricardo keep it flexible. We, can, we can do that all in the yeah. um, comments in that PR. yeah sounds good for me Cool. Great. Well, thank you so much, everything. Thanks for coming, Abhishek. I know you're on parental leave. I'm sorry about that. I kind of spaced when I messaged you in the chat, but I really appreciate it. Um, and I Actually, he's thanking you because he can say, okay, I need to solve this. <laughs> they need <Yeah>. me. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell my he's, wife. <laughs> he's getting bored. He's getting bored. He wants to come back. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Well, thank you, everyone, and uh, look forward to seeing you next week, and we'll be in touch tomorrow, Ricardo. Thanks. Bye, See everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye.